check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. What's up, people? Happy Tuesday. How is everybody doing? Hello, hello, hello. It's been a minute since I had a solo show. I've had a lot of guests on lately, and I like to break it up. I don't want to do a guest every single week, so kind of pumped to be here with you guys solo, you know? Yell my opinions and all that good stuff, you know? Do regular stuff, and there's lots to talk about. I mean, we all know what just happened to Grimes, right? Everybody's right, you know? You guys know I'm about to talk about it. I got to die. I feel like it sucks. Like, it, 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 uh, it all came out yesterday, and my shows today, you know, I wish my show was yesterday because I feel like it's beat to death. Everyone has an opinion on it. Every DJ and their mom and their dog came out and was like, yeah, she sucks, man. And just, I should be up there. And you know, if it was me, I would have done way better. Yeah. Like, shut up. All right. All of you shut up. Like, it's, it, it, but if you happen to be living under a rock and you didn't see what happened, all right, here's a, here's a little, uh, a recap. <laughs> This is brutal. I would die. This is a difficult thing to explain. But we're having a major technical error where all the sound tempos are double speed, and I have not practiced the math because I'm not fast at math. All right, number one, okay. Right off the bat, my first reaction to this was, you dated Elon Musk for four years and you can't divide by two? Come on now. You dated one of the smartest guys on the planet? Isn't he like a genius? He's like an autistic genius or some shit, Elon Musk. You can't divide by two, girl? Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> it's kind of crazy to me. Um, so what I think happened was, uh, well, so she came out with a tweet, first of all. So like the tweet, we'll just read that. All right. From, you know, from her direct, right? I want to apologize for technical issues, da, 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 da. Um, she essentially didn't handle her SD cards. She had someone else do it for for her, and they weren't formatted for record box. So when she plugged it in, or you know, when she went up there, her BPMs weren't correct, right? Some of them were doubling. She said uh, on the bottom here, um, the CDJs were showing me BPMs like 370, so I couldn't even mix manually by ear. You could always mix manually by ear. I mean, BPMs have nothing to do with that, number one. Um but yeah, so I guess, you know, maybe she's playing some d drum and bass and like the, you know, 150 BPMs, 160 BPMs were turned into 300 and 320, just kind of dub doubling and shit. I don't know. It's just a, it's a crazy situation. Um, you know, a couple things. Always be prepared, right? Number one, always be prepared. You want to be prepared to the gods, okay? Don't outsource anything when it comes to that stuff, especially when you're on one of the biggest stages in the world. 
Um, two, at least she mixes. That's pretty cool. She live mixes, you know, um, not a lot of those DJs live mix. Um, and I'm sure a lot of the DJs that don't live mix were kind of like, ha ha ha. That's why I don't do that shit. That's why I just pre-make my mix in Ableton and I'm good to go with the visuals and all that stuff. You know what I mean? So shouts to her for at least live mixing and trying, you know, she clearly does live mix. Um, and if you mess up, you know, in a set in general, don't call it out on the mic. It's a bad idea. Most people don't know, especially at Coachella. Coachella, how many of those people are tripping balls right now? How many of those people are rolling their face off? You know, Molly, ecstasy, mushrooms, wherever the hell else drugs are out now. I don't know. It's been a minute for me. But like, these people are fucked up. This is a festival stage. You know what I mean? Like, they don't know. I would, I doubt it. Maybe some people knew it. it doesn't matter. You go to the next song, you reverb out and you, and you, and you roll, you know, like you, you don't want to call it out. You never want to stop your set completely, have a nervous breakdown and call it out. One of the great skills experienced DJs learn is how to have a nervous breakdown internally, just internally on the inside. You're just, you're dying on the inside. Like, holy shit. I'm going to die. Oh my God. What's going on. But then on the outside, just, <laughs> Yeah, everything's fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got to fake it. You got to fake it in those situations. You, you can't call it out on the mic. Like, hey, I'm having technical difficulties. Uh, all the BPMs are doubled. Everyone, like, they're, they're, there's chicks in the crowd just rolling on, on Molly. Just like, what? What's a BPM? Like, you know what I mean? Like, can you imagine being in that crowd? I, I would just be like, I'd be bugging out. Like, oh my God, am I creating this? I did it with my mind. It's with my mind, man. Like, imagine tripping on mushrooms and you're just like the music stops and the visuals are still kind of going and, and the DJ's just like, everything's messing up. Everything's hodgemodulating. Oh my God. Oh my God. Like it must've been a bug out <laughs> like for real. Like that shit's nuts. And that's all I got to say about that. All right. I wish her the best. Um, you know, everyone says they could do it better, whatever. I don't know. You know, it, it, she messed up. She's human. She admitted to it. She did handle it wrong. And uh, I'm sure she's not going to handle it like that again. And, uh, and that's it. She, you know, I wish her, you know, more success. She's got a, she's got some songs and followers and opportunities and all that good stuff. You know what I mean? I don't know. You know, let her do her thing. That's all. That's all I got to say about Grimes. But thank you all for joining me. Thank you all for joining me. Appreciate it. Yo, Casanova. Shouts to you, bro. I think I saw DJ D-Man in here earlier. What's up, DJ D-Man? Thank you guys all for joining me. So, um... Being that this is a wedding DJ show, I guess, or a DJ show, but like, you know, I do a lot of weddings. Um, let's, uh, let's talk about our friends, the knot, huh? Our friends over at the knot had a, had a little, uh, do not playlist. Um, tw these 26 do not play wedding songs are a hard pass. Okay. When these lists come out, I always think they're interesting. It's good to pay attention to them. And all DJ, you know what I mean? Some DJs stick their nose up at this. Like, oh, oh they, these are these are bangers. I'm still going to play them. First of all, while I agree that our friends at The Knot don't know shit about shit, I also think that any songs that are on this list should raise eyebrows, right? If you do play these songs every single wedding, clearly every other DJ does too. Do you know what I'm saying? And I think like a big way, there's so many hits. There's so many things to play. Like I think... You know, a big way to set yourself apart, especially in your market, is just playing different songs. You know what I mean? Staying away from the the, the played out shit. You know what I mean? Or at least if you're going to play them, have a cool idea with them at least or something, a wordplay or, you know what I mean? Like a unique take on it. If you just play, if you just vomit out these songs every single wedding, day in and day out, you're kind of just putting yourself in a box of every other DJ. You know, you want to set yourself apart. So I just want to precede all this with that. Um, but let's go over the songs real quick. Okay. I'll give you my two sets. So, and we're going to go everything, obviously Cupid shuffle, the wobble, the Macarena, the chicken, dance, all that shit was on there. Okay. So we're not talking about like all the line dance and all the bait, you know, all the line dances were on there. Trust me. Okay. And I don't, I, I, I hate them. I don't play them. I, I avoid them like the play. I actually played the wobble this past weekend because the bride and groom wanted it. I got a video of it too, but I, but I did a word play with it. You know what I mean? Like so, you know, I'll probably drop that video this week sometime, but like, Generally speaking, I, I hate line dances. I stay away from them. So we're not even going to talk about those. But let's talk about the songs. Single Ladies. Single Ladies. They say it's a nice tribute to the ladies who are single, but they're like, it's old as shit, and you should probably play Texas Hold'em instead. I don't... Um, if you have a good edit of Texas Hold'em, yes. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't play Single Ladies. Party Rock Anthem. Our, uh, our buddy DJ Danger, Danger Zone from the last show. Probably... Would hate to see that, but that's kind of played out. Yeah, I don't really play that too much. Happy by Pharrell. 
it was always like, like happy by for all was always like a, a like a like a it, it brought the energy down for me you know what i mean even when it was hot like even when it came out in 2014 2015 like in that area like it always kind of because i'm happy like i don't know i never really like you know i played it but like it was never like a holy shit i can't wait to play this it wasn't like an uptown funk you know what i mean which is also on this list which i kind of stopped playing i also stopped playing can't stop the feeling um which is on this list by justin timberlake i think that just got beat to death shut up and dance another thing i kind of avoid unless it's on the list um we got all about that bass. That was never a dance floor song. That that that's boring. All about that bass. Like, that's a huge drop in energy. All town, old town road. That's probably the newest song on this list. That's already gotten. Uh, it came across as annoying and overplayed. I don't know. Shape of You. This was an interesting one, right? Shape of You by Ed Sheeran. Um, smash hit in 2017 has since become very polarizing. Some guests may be happy to hear it, while others might find it overhyped inappropriate or just plain unenjoyable how is shape of you inappropriate the whole song is about ed sheeran or you know maybe not ed sheeran anyone insert yourself in the situation the whole song is about meeting a chick at a bar dancing with her taking her home a little smoosh smoosh and then the second verse even talks about their first date so it's not like it's a one like it, w- it wasn't one and done you know what i mean it wasn't a one night stand the second verse goes in goes into their first date and what they order for food or some shit and it doesn't even have an appropriate language. Like, what, what, like are we getting that soft? The, the sh- shape of you is inappropriate for weddings because, oh, it, it's just talking about meeting a girl at a bar. I, I meet girls at bars and, you know, get close to me and dance. And then, oh, your, your bed sheets smell like me. Like, what the fuck? What's wrong with that? What, what's wrong with that? Okay. There's just songs from the 60s and 70s. What, what's Run Around Sue? Run Around Sue is a hoe. Okay. Run Around Sue is about a hoe in the early 60s. There was hoes back then too. And it wasn't even a one that, I don't know. It's just soft, fucking soft. I hate the knot. Hate the knot. I got a feeling. Yeah. Yeah. A Thousand Years by Christina Perry. The most overused first dance song for couples. I don't think so. I don't think so at all. A Thousand Years is the most overused processional song for for ceremonies. See, this is how you can tell whoever wrote this doesn't, doesn't DJ weddings, right? You know, th- th- that, that uh, piano guy's A Thousand Years. Every, every single wedding on earth, like was using that for like the bride to walk down, like the processional. Okay. Not as a first dance, the most overused first dance song back to Ed Sheeran is probably thinking out loud, you know, or uh, what's the John legend. Uh, um, oh my God. It came all, all, um, all of me by John legend. Those were the most overused first dance songs. I can, I can count on one hand how many times a couple actually used a thousand years for the first dance. You tell me in the comments, YMCA. That's absolutely wrong. It's a banger. I don't want to hear it. Celebration, eh. Get low. See, I like get low, but I have I have I have routines with it too. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. I, I don't think I think get get low still works. This says like others on the li- on this list, get low was a go to party song at its peak. However, it has become an obvious and to some annoying choice for receptions. I don't know. That's like the, the, get low is probably the one song that like out of this whole list that I'm just like I don't know. I I still I, I think. I think it's a banger. I don't know. Gangnam Style, absolutely. Holy shit. And then Sweet Caroline. Sweet Caroline's a dinner song. That's not a dancing song to me. Oh, and let's not forget to mention Who Let the Dogs Out. And it says here, right? So I was reading this article and it says, in 2007, Who Let the Dogs Out ranked number three on Rolling Stone's list of 20 most annoying songs, proving the song has been irritating listeners for many years. Save spots in your playlist for songs that are instead beloved. Chat GBT ass article. So that made me think, though. I was like, okay, there's a list of the 20 most annoying songs by Rolling Stones. And I looked it up. It's actually on Spotify. So let's look at this real quick, right? So we got these Voted by whoever, I don't know. The top 20 most annoying songs. Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go. I like that song. Closing Time by Semisonic. I, I swear to God on the inside. Sorry if any of my couples happen to be watching the show for some reason. But like um, anytime a couple picks Closing Time, like it, it's it's hilarious. Like I'll be in the meeting and it's always, they never have it. Like they always have the, you know, what do you want to end your celebration on? And it's always blank, right? And I'll ask me, hey, is there a song in particular like you, you want to end your celebration on? And they, whenever they say Closing Time, they come up with it like it was the greatest deal, like greatest idea ever. They're just, they think to themselves like, oh, what about Closing Time? Oh my God, how perfect is that? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> 
wow, what an original idea. <laughs> Like they literally, like they literally think they just, just they, they're so proud of themselves. They, they it just pops in their head and they're like, oh, I got a great idea. I got myself a great idea. Listen to this. What if we ended it on closing time? Oh my God, that is revolutionary. That is just revolutionary. I didn't even think of that. Wow, will do. Good idea. And I type it in on the inside. I'm like, holy shit, I can't. Believe. Why every single time? Um, live in La Vida Loca. Bye 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 by NSYNC. Is that annoying? I play bye 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 every once in a while. It's a good bridge. Like I like bye 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 because it's like it's you could speed it up to like 88, 89 BPMs. It's a good bridge. Like when you're getting out of the 70s, trying to get up into the 90s and uh 100 BPM range, you know, like hip hop and stuff. Like it's a good bridge, like in between. Um, I do anything for love. Yeah, it's annoying. Mm 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 mm. Crash test dummies. I don't even know that song. So there's that. Um, blue da b d, yeah. Well, that yeah, that that's uh uh. We all play. I'm good now. You know what I mean. So like, we're gonna play that. Cotton Eye Joe, obviously. Tub thumping. Yeah, I get knocked down. Barbie girl. Oh yeah, believe is a banger. Believe by share is a banger. I don't know. I play that all the time. Bars. You know, uh, the weddings. Like, but you gotta play it right. You know, you, you just gotta be one chorus and out. Don't do a whole verse. No one cares about a verse. You know what I mean? If you just, if you just, if you mix it in and just do a, I believe she's. It's like a sixteen bar verse too. It's like a two. You know, it's pretty long. And you just do that, you're Gucci. If you go into a verse, if you go into a share verse, all of a sudden everyone just like stops like bopping, and they just like they all get transformed into like they, they, it, it essentially a share verse reminds me of shopping at Ames. I don't know if all you guys would get that reference. Sears, Sears. Everyone knows Sears, right? It reminds me of shopping at Sears. Like they would always play in the 90s when I was growing up and I'm following my mom around shopping, right? You know, I'm eight years old, you know, and it's like 1996, 1997. Like Believe by Cher would always be playing. It would always be like that 90s kind of housey vibe. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway. Thong Song by Cisco. Yeah. Wanna Be by Spice Girls. Super annoying to me. Um, but I don't, But if it's requested, I play it, obviously. I mean, what am I going to do? You're Beautiful. Yeah, he's got a stupid voice. Uh, Mambo number five, I stopped playing Mambo number five for a minute for like 10 years, I'd say. Okay. When I started DJing in two thousands, you know, and then it came out, that shit was hot, right? I think it came out probably 08 or something, maybe earlier. Let me know when Mambo f uh, number five came out, but like I was, you know, it was a banger and then it got so played out. I just like, I stopped playing it. And then the recently, the last year, I would say, uh, you know, not every wedding or whatever, you know, definitely not a bar stuff, but like, you know, every, every once in a while I've been bringing it out, you know, it's, it's one of those, it's a, it's a double tempo song, you know, like, so you can, people know it, people bop, but again, you gotta be quick. Okay. Don't be doing three verses of this shit. All right. Just, just kind of just the one, two, three, four, five and a chorus and that's it. And you're out. Photograph by Nickelback. Absolutely. My heart will go on. I don't know if you drop that right. <laughs> My heart will go on. You can make work. Who Let the Dogs Out is on there, uh, as we heard earlier. Macarena and My Humps. I think My Humps, I still play that. I think it's a banger. You know what I mean? So what, what, what do we learn here? I mean, I, I think the overall theme, right, with all these annoying songs, it, it's all subjective, number one, okay? Because it's all we're all talking about art here. It's just it, it's it's all subjective. But, it, but also, like, I think you can make almost anything work if you play it correctly, you know, you just have to play it correctly and learning how to do that. There's just so many variables. It's, it's a lot of just like guessing and like just trying this out and like, Oh, that didn't work. Not doing that next time. You know what I mean? It's just like you had to sacrifice, you know, a quote unquote, a bad mix or leaving a song on too long. You know what I mean? That one time. And then you remember for the next time, but it also changes depending on the crowd and stuff, you know, and sometimes crowds react You want to leave it longer, whatever. But like, it's all about just how you play it. You know, you could really make anything work. But generally speaking, my advice, you know, my two cents for what it's worth is like if, if there's any song on a list that's super played out, I, you know, that they're, they're saying it's like, you know, on a do not play list all the time or, you know, like any of these lists like annoying or do not play or whatever. Any of these songs are on the list. I try and avoid just because you want to set yourself apart. And that's the biggest way to charge more money, to like build your own brand as a DJ. Like we all have the same equipment. We all have everything else. It's about what you play and how you play it. Literally, that's all it is. Okay. That's, that's, that's the only difference between all of us. It's what you play and how you play it. We all play shit differently and we all play different shit. But if we all play the same shit, 
and you don't have a cool idea with it or something like then you're just putting yourself in that box of every other DJ. And why would they pay more for you than Joe Schmo down the road? And we all know, okay. in every aspect of DJ game, there's always a Joe Schmo willing to do it cheaper because at the end of the day, it's a fun job. And most of us are part time and it's just extra money, whatever. I'll do your wedding for 500 bucks, whatever. I'll do your bar for 150 bucks. You know what I mean? There's always someone who's trying to take our job cheaper or whatever, because that's just the nature of this business. So you have to set yourself apart by what you play and how you play it. And social media, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Just my two sets on all that. Did you guys hear about this? Twitch close to DJ live streaming deal with labels. Oh, shouts. Yeah. It's good. Iron Mike. Iron Mike's got a playlist on Spotify called Bop Right. And it's basically like all the songs he hears in Shop Right. And if you guys aren't from on the East Coast or whatever, uh, ShopRite is like our grocery store out here. So it's like, uh, I don't know. I'm not gonna, yeah, it's our grocery store out here. So he's got it. It's called BopRite. It's a legendary Twitch list or um, um, uh, uh, Spotify list. Definitely check that shit out. But yeah, so look at Twitch here. Okay. This is interesting. First of all, shout to Kova. I was talking to Kova on the phone uh, the other day. So, so uh, DJ Kova, he does tweak music tips on Twitch. And he streams it live. He has a show. And he got Dan Clancy, the CEO of Twitch, to come on his show and do an interview. And this guy doesn't do interviews. Like, it's, it's crazy. I was like, how'd you get him? He's like, I just bothered the shit out of him. All right. He just bothered him until finally he agreed to come on. So the CEO of Twitch, Dan, Dan the man, comes on. And, you know, they have a whole conversation everything. And in the middle of that conversation, he talks about how he's close to doing a deal with lab labels, um, record labels with music. So there's going to be like a revenue share. He, has, he didn't share any of the details other than once the deal is set, he's going to have a deal with the labels. And then when, you know, we DJ on Twitch and we play music, we're going to have to now share our revenue with these greedy ass labels. And this shit pissed me off right away. I can't stand this shit. This drives me nuts. Okay. These people, th th these labels, they're, they're just like, some of you would be like, well, they don't get to make money you know, with CD sales anymore, or record sales. So like, how are they going to make money? You what do you mean how they're going to make money? Like they, they, they could go on tour. They sell merch. I mean, any of these famous artists, they have famous songs. Like they, they endorsement deals. They can, um, they, they, there's a million ways they can make money. They hop on social media. They make a bajillion dollars on social media because they get all these views because they are who they are. There's tons of ways to make money nowadays. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not from quote unquote CD sales, but you still get some of that too. Like, you know what I mean? You got to take our shit. Like, it's just whack. Like, if this goes through, which probably, of course, it is eventually. Like, once this goes through, if I stream on Twitch, I'm doing nothing but remixes and mashups. I'm just going to trick the algorithm. At that, That's just going to be my goal. I'm, it's just going to be mashup, remix Wednesdays. I'm not going to play one original track ever. I'm just going to trick the algorithm so they can't pick it up so I can keep all my damn revenue. And that's what we all should do. All right? We all should just rebel against and we'll just trick the algorithm. We'll make them have to spend extra money on the AI robot that listens in on our streams and tries to identify these songs and that song. You know what I mean? I'm gonna take my. I'm also gonna take my pitch and time off of Serato. So just ooh, so, I'm, so everything I play is gonna be out of key. I'm gonna fuck with them. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. You're not. You're not. You're not taking my streaming revenue. It's bullshit. Okay. It's bullshit. It's bullshit how it works in YouTube. And it's just probably just gonna be the same thing. They're gonna want a YouTube type deal. Like, guys, I don't, for those of you that don't do YouTube, okay, you know how this bullshit works? I'll do a show, right? I'm doing this show right now, like a live show or whatever, okay? You watch the commercials, I get paid, yada, yada, yada. If I happen to have, actually, I'm thinking about it, with the Grimes, was she playing a song? Hopefully that wasn't long enough. So this is how it works, okay? If I happen to show a video like that and she was playing a song and the YouTube algorithm picked it up, 100% of my ad revenue from this show, 100% will go to Grimes or whoever wrote that song, 100%. For as little as a seven second clip, that's, that's how bullshit that is, okay? I, I'm over here slaving over a hot microphone. For a whole hour, yelling my opinions, okay? Risking getting canceled every day for this show, okay? And if I play a snippet of a song, YouTube takes all of my revenue and puts it right to that artist. That's how it works. All of it. Just all, not a portion of it. Not like a proportional. They don't let pro rate it. You know, it's like, all right, well, this was, you know, 0.5% of the video. So 0.5% of the revenue goes, no, 100%. So that's the president. So like, I'm assuming that like, if, if, 
they have a deal if record labels have a deal like that with YouTube that's exactly what the deal is going to be like with Twitch you know what I mean like and, and think about it you do a stream you play 100 songs if it picks up 80 85 of them I mean they're splitting revenue all kinds of ways UMG gets this Sony gets this whatever they're splitting you, you where are we going to get paid I don't see any I don't see us getting paid at all I think like they're probably negotiating a deal because they don't want to take away all everything. You know what I mean? Are they going to take away the bits too? Like you get tipped in bits that goes to some of the record labels because you're playing their music. Like it's messy. It's all fucked up. It drives me nuts. It drives me nuts. And these are just like, we're, we're just trying to make it out here in these streets. You know, the DJs that stream on Twitch all the time and everything, you make a couple hundred bucks a month or whatever. Like it's, 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 you, you got to take that too. You're all right. You're all making million. What the fuck? You know, it just drives me nuts. So it's either like, it's either you got to take pitch and time off and play nothing but mashups and remixes on Twitch or I mean, stream live on TikTok. I mean, right now TikTok isn't like really messing with you. And then at least like, you're not going to make money live on TikTok. Like there's no real money on it with it. But what you do what the benefit of streaming on TikTok is you get the most amount of viewers in any other platform. Like you can, you can like, you don't even need followers. If you're doing good, you know what I mean? It'll push it in their algorithm and you, you, you'll easily have a hundred viewers like with no followers. Like if you, if you haven't tried it, DJs try it. Like it's really cool. You have to stream through your phone and get like one of those, you know, wires or whatever. So you can have direct audio, but like you get a good amount of viewers, but the benefit at the end of the day is converting those viewers into followers. And then now you build up a TikTok following and then like TikTok does pay pretty well nowadays. Like TikTok has been paying pretty good. TikTok's like almost at YouTube levels, like they're trying to, they're trying to compete with YouTube. I think like it, it, it's pretty crazy, but they don't with TikTok, they do camp campaigns. It's not like just a steady, like this, is what you get paid on. Like TikTok is like, it's always like a, a different campaign every quarter. Like right now, TikTok is trying to push longer form content to fuck with YouTube, I guess. And TikTok will only pay on videos that are over one minute. So any videos that are under one minute, zero money. Which fucking drives me nuts because like my videos are all like 30 seconds you know what i mean my videos are like my sex life nah, let's skip where's my rim shot boom boom anyway that's my rant for the day anybody got questions <laughs> oh that's a good point too mac yeah you do need a thousand followers to stream live so you got to build up there too i got yeah i forgot about that but but after that it's worth it though it's cool like you can get like a ton of people on your lives you know what i mean like if you have a good stream like it's it's definitely the best algorithm for it. Whereas like Twitch is brutal. Twitch is so hard. You know, you start out on Twitch. I think I was streaming to like 10 people for the first six months or something. You know what I mean? It was crazy. You got to just like, just smoke a joint and vibe. Just not worry about the, 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 the viewers and all that, you know, can we form a lobbying group to start getting DJs exempt from all this copyright crap? How the fuck you supposed to have any sort of digital presence as a DJ nowadays. Yeah, it's impossible. It, it's getting harder and harder. And then the smarter, what scares me is like the smarter the algorithm gets, because right now you can get away with stuff, you know what I mean? Like, you know, little, little clips or, you know, if you're mixing it, it doesn't pick it up. But I mean, obviously it's just going to get better and better. Eventually it's going to be able to pick up any type of song. So like, I don't know, I'm just trying to like push as much content as I can now with music and everything until they take it away from me, you know, and then, and then, then by then, you know, like, I think we all should just build our following. If you're into that, build your following, use music, do everything you can while we can do it. And then if they end up taking away all that, where you can't use any music or whatever, however it works, it's probably all going to be just revenue shares. You're just not gonna be able to make any money, but worst case Worst case scenario, they take away all of our abilities to use any type of music and we're all DJs. Like that's what our content will be about. Then at least like you have a following already and then you can just like, you know, do talking head shit like this, you know, I don't know. It's scary. It's scary shit. How often does dubstep get requested in weddings you do? Very rarely. Um... When I do get requested for dubstep, it's usually just like uh, the 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 what what are the old Skrillex jams like Scary Sprites, Nice, whatever. Like I forget the name of it, but um, those shits like the classic ones, and I'll just drop one of those like out of nowhere. You know what I mean? It's like fun. Everybody's like, "Oh shit!" You know what I'm talking about? That song? That's just fire. Like everyone knows that song. I'll still play that out of nowhere, like at a bar or a club or something, but um. But I'm not going to drop that at a wedding unless it's like requested. You know what I mean? That's a big risk. Um, your favorite nephew asks you to DJ his wedding. How much are you charging? Full price. <laughs> nah, I'm not DJing his wedding. I'll say no. So, I, I, so um, I avoid that by just saying like I want to be a guest. You know what I mean? Um, I don't want to. I don't want to DJ the wedding anyway. It's a lot. You know, I'd rather like be a guest and enjoy it. 
And then I don't want to get into do any money type stuff. You know what I mean? Of course, like I would just like do shit for free for family, but like, I'd rather just be there and have a good time and get, get litty, you know? So that's what I'll say. I'll be like, listen, I'll recommend the best DJs ever. And then I can just come and be a guest and uh, let my hair down. Lewis, it's funny you ask when I'm going to start producing because, uh, me and Santi have been talking about it every every week uh, that I need to get on Ableton, and uh, I think I'm gonna start doing it soon. I'm gonna start. Uh, I'm gonna start out with edits. Okay, I'm, I have a lot of edit ideas, just like you know, just for myself, just just things I wish I had an edit on, you know, because I don't make any of my own. Right now, I don't. I don't do shit. So I'm gonna start out with edits. I'm downloading Ableton or Serato Studio. I'm gonna try both. I don't know where I'm gonna go, but um, I'm gonna start making my own edits, make all my own useful edits just for myself. Once I get the hang of that. Then I might, you know, dibber dabber on like a little, you know, try and remix something, try and make my own little beats and just take it from there and see where it goes. You know what I mean? But I've been thinking about it a while. Like I, I, um, I think I have a couple cool ideas and it'll just be fun. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'll suck at it though. Who knows? Um, have, have you ever done your show? No, Mixcloud sucks. Tony Morris, Mixcloud sucks. I mean, I don't want to, I feel bad. Fucking Mixcloud is great. I like Mixcloud. They're trying hard, okay, and, and and they have they are the only legal quote unquote legal platform to live stream, and they're cool for mixes. I got mixes up there and all that other stuff, but the audience isn't there. Their marketing isn't there, so they don't suck. Their marketing sucks. Do you know what I mean? You're you're not gonna you're not gonna build an audience on mixed cloud. Nobody's there. There's just nobody there. Everyone's on Twitch. A lot of people on Twitch. You could build on Twitch. There's even more people on TikTok. You can really build on TikTok. Probably about a billion people on that bitch. You know what I mean? Mixcloud doesn't have the people. So without the people, it's just not worth it. They tried. It's just their marketing's not there. You know what I mean? I don't know what it is. I mean, maybe it's probably a money thing too. It costs a lot of money to, uh, you know, the, is, what, what do they call it in business? The cost of a- acquisition, you know, to get how much does it cost per person to come on the app and hang out and listen to shit, you know what I mean? And they're also a one lane too, like Twitch streams everything. So you might be into gaming and like watching all that and then you come across a DJ, you know, stream that you're like, oh, I didn't re- even realize I would like a DJ stream, but I like it. You know what I'm saying? Whereas like Twitch is all DJ streams, so you, you, you have to like it ahead of time just to go there. So I don't know. I think it's a sinking ship personally. Nick V, thanks for the super chat. Appreciate you, bro. Got started DJing house parties this year with Prime Go. Let's go. That's fire. That's the best way to start. House parties. Best way to start. 275 to 300 person wedding in a 50 by 100 tent. Is two 18 inch EV bottoms and two 15 inch Pioneer tops enough or do I need more juice? You should be good, but it depends which bottoms you got. I mean, you know what I mean? Hopefully those are EKX bottoms or... You know, if they're, if they're ZLX bottoms, then um, you're not going to have the low end, but you'll be fine. I personally would use two 15-inch tops and two 18-inch bottoms for sure. Um, <laughs> I played WAP at a Sweet 16. Is my name going to get added to a government database now? Probably. I'm on every database there is, trust me. For sure. Uh, do, did you like Rick Webb's idea of using gravity stands to put your movers on? Um, it's cool. I do like it. Um, I just wear it like I have like really big ass movers. Um, I have like the 140 SR hybrids. They're like bigger. They're bigger movers. And I, I, I do worry about like just stability. Um, Cleveland Terry just came out with a video. Or he just posted a, a reel. Shout out to Cleveland Terry. And he had like a wild stand too. It wasn't like a traditional truss. It was like, a, I don't know, maybe it was a gravity thing. And he had his spots on the stands. And he had the, the wireless spots. There's new wireless spots. They're like, they're battery powered or whatever. And that shit looked mad clean. But I got to see him in real life. I don't know. I just worry about like, that's one of like, we have insurance. DJs have insurance for pretty much no reason except for if a speaker or a spotlight or something fell on grandma. You know what I mean? That would be the one time where we're pretty fucked, you know? And that's like my worst fear of mine. Like, you know, a spotlight just because they're moving too. the movers just moving and just tips over and falls and just takes out grandma. And that's how grandma goes out. It's not me, man. Not me. Not me. So I don't know. I got to see it in real life. But Nick, what's your go to technical advice troubleshooting? I find that both manufacturers, legit tech support and social media groups, forums are full of know-it-alls who don't know shit. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. Um, it's tough. You gotta, uh, 
you got to learn on the job. You got to try to like every time I um, every time something technical fucks up, I try and reverse engineer it and figure out exactly what went wrong. And like, so I know how to fix it. So over the years, I kind of like know how to fix most things. You know what I mean? Like in the moment, um, some and a lot of times I'm, you know, I'm using the Internet to reverse engineer it. You know, you have to swift through all the dumbasses and then you find, oh, actually, this guy's right. You know, that's what it was. And the light bulb goes off. But it's just it's trial and error with all that shit, man. I mean, I don't know, because there's so many little things that can go wrong. And you know what I mean? Like. It's just good to know the ins and outs so you can put out fires on the fly. Um, any plans on playing festivals or just sticking to commercial? Bro, if I had the ability to just play a festival, I would definitely play a festival. That shit looks crazy, but I, I don't I don't have that opportunity yet. One of these days, you know what I mean? You got to get a, you know, uh, f- you know, having followers and all that's cool, but like um, having a hit song is even cooler. And uh, that seems to be what's on those festival stages. You know what I mean? So um, I don't know. I don't know. It's tough. But yeah, I would, I would play it. I just love that. I'll play in a closet. I just love the DJ. So like, especially the bigger the crowd, the better. I'm always down. Um, no such thing as ZLX bottoms. Oh, my bad. All right. ELX. Oh yeah. They're solid. Okay. Yeah. My bad. I wasn't sure if ZLX made bottoms. I just know ZLX is the, those, those, uh, poopy tops. They're, they're entry level top. I got to stop being mean. All right. I'm trying to be nicer. I'm a dad now. They're entry level top speakers okay zlx's are fine they're very nice they're fine they're affordable the new g2s have good technology cool technology the color screen and the onboard dsp and yada 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 okay they're nice entry-level speakers they won't last you forever eventually you want to move up to the better stuff that's all okay that's all you make a video, uh, compare how easy it is to use Serato Studio versus Ableton since you never used it. Yeah, I, I actually should kind of uh, vlog my whole process, like just me sitting down and trying to fuck with shit for the first time because like it's very daunting. You know what I mean? It's very, very daunting. Like when you like, if you don't use Ableton or Serato Studio, like you'd probably agree with me. Like you just look at it and it just looks so complicated. And I'm just like, oh, God, I don't know where to start. Like, you know what I mean? But like we were at a wedding uh, a couple days ago and uh, I wanted an edit to try out this wordplay. Or I needed an edit to try out this wordplay. And Sanji's like, well, I got my computer. I'll make it quick. I'm like, all right. And then he busts out his computer and he made this edit for me in like 30 seconds. And that's what really made me like, is that easy? He's like, yeah, just fucking, do, do, do. that's it. It's a fucking, I'm like, what do you mean? Like, it's, it's, it's a doll, bro. I'm like, oh. So that's when, that's when the light, light bulb went off my head. I'm like, oh, shit. A little easier than I thought. I was kind of like uh, hyping this up to be something crazy. You know what I mean? It looks pretty, at least he made it look easy. I mean, I don't know. Um, what, what do you do with uh, products companies send you? You have to give it back all the time. So Pioneer makes me give it back. Um, but other, other companies let me keep it. You know, it just depends. Every deal is different. You know, LD systems, uh, when LD sent me a set of speakers, they let me keep everything in exchange for the video, which is very nice of them. Um, in music will most of the time let you keep shit. Um, Pioneer usually got to send it back. They, they, you know, but they're pioneer, you know, it just depends on the company and then on the deal and the product. Every, every situation is different. Um, if I get sent like, uh, those, uh, the Jetpack backpacks, shout out to Jetpack. It's my favorite DJ ba- uh, backpack. They're made in uh, Cali. Shout out to all those guys. Um, they always let me keep those. Like, you know what I mean? It just depends. Uh, Alto wireless. I'm, uh, I'm sure it's fine, but like if you're in a busy airspace, like I'm at, I would never trust that shit in a million years. I'm very particular on what I use wirelessly wise around here. Cause you know, we're in a, I'm literally two hours away from New York city, Philadelphia, Baltimore, like DC's like three hours away. Like there's so many, we're on the shore with the boats and shit and the Navy and the coast guard. There's our airspace is fucked up around here. So like, I don't, I don't, if it's cheap, I'm not using it. You know what I mean? If it's like an affordable option, I'm not using it. Like I don't need nothing to cut out. Like it's just, but if you're like, if you're kind of out in the middle of nowhere, you know what I mean? Like you're not near any major city or whatever, then, uh, you know, yeah, I'm sure it works great. Plenty of things. You know, there's DJs that use great, egregious microphone systems and, and, oh, sounds great. It was only 300 bucks. I'm like, that would never work in New Jersey. You, it only works cause you're in Western West Virginia. That's the only reason why it works. Like, you know what I mean? Johnny, I don't know what genre of music would I produce. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm just going to, I'm just going to get, I'm just going to smoke a fat J and uh, whatever comes to me. You know what I mean? I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to see what happens. Um, guy here. Sorry. I was catching up. 
How many years did it take you to get where you are uh, being sponsored in the popularity as well as your professionalism? I don't, I don't think I got anywhere yet. Um, I've been DJing for 20 years though. I've been making, I've been making content since I started my YouTube channel in 2017. No, I started making videos in 2017. I started this channel in 2018, I think late 2018 or early 2019 is when I actually like started posting on this channel. Um, so I would say like, I've been like, but yeah, when I joined SCE, that's when I kind of realized like I got to get my content up because like these guys are crushing it and no one's going to want to book me. So like I joined SCE Cinco de Mayo 2017. Um, so pretty much then, like that's probably when I, I jumped in the water and was like, all right, I got to content's a part of life now. It's either sink or swim. You know what I mean? There's no uh, in between. If I want to get booked, I got to make content. And that's, that's where it all started. And then it just evolved from that. You know what I mean? I never, uh, had any, um, I only ever wanted to get booked. That's, that was my only goal. You know what I mean? I was like, I'll yell my opinions out here, but then I got into it. it it's really fun making videos and shit. So, um, Donovan, Donovan Yawkey. Thanks so much for the super sticker, bro. Yeah. My, the, uh, with hearts popping out of his eyes. That's a, I love how it describes the emojis. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you, brother. Uh, what DJs do you look up to as far as your influences? Um, I'm a AM is, uh, AM is number one for me. Always will be, uh, what he's done and, uh, his mixes to this day are just unbelievable. And I just, I love what he always did. I was a huge, huge AM fan and he helped, uh, influence me, you know, to get my shit together like, you know, just get more creative mixing and stuff like that when I was more basic back in the day. Cause I started out as an MC. I started out, uh, you know, I started out teaching line dances. I didn't even mix, you know what I mean? First, probably five years of my career, I barely mixed. I was just teaching line dances and teaching routines. I was an entertainer, you know what I mean? Like, and then I was like, you know what? I can like, you know, figure out this mixing shit. And yeah, yeah. So he was a big part of that. But nowadays, I don't know. I, I just looked at DJs. Uh, some DJs uh, really inspire me as far as like their creativeness, like, um, like Four Color Zach is, is one of my favorites. He's so creative. Uh, J.S. Espinosa, Chris Villa, so creative. So many good ideas. Even Steve, we had a show a couple weeks ago. So many good ideas. Like just, oh, their routines and their tone plays and word plays. I'm just like, how the fuck did you think of that? It's just unreal to me. Like, you know what I mean? I love like the creative things like that. Um, and then like, and then there's just DJs that are just killing it. Just, they're so good with just like, uh, the business end of it. And just like, they get, they, 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 they do the coolest parties and awesome DJ, you know, like, um, you know, uh, DJ spider, you know, uh, like Eric Rhodes, man, like Eric Rhodes is, you know, we've been in touch since he's been on the show and like, you know, he's really motivating the, the guy like is really just making the most out of his situation and just doing really cool things. And I just, you know, I really look up to him for that, you know, and like you've been getting a couple tips from him just like on the business side of things and how he's running things. Like Eric Rhodes is a fucking lunatic. This guy, right? This fucking guy just posted all his DJ equipment for sale. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, Oh, I'm, I'm fucking, I'm just booking myself as a talent. I'm not even setting up speakers anymore. So now if you want, if you want Eric Rhodes to DJ for you in any capacity, you have to provide all the, all the shit, the, 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 the mixer, the speakers, everything. He just shows up with his laptop like Tiesto. Now that's fucking goals. Okay. I'm not there yet. That's fucking goals. I don't know if I could, I, it, it gives me anxiety. Like I like having control. Like to me, like when I set up my own speakers, my own furniture and my own turntable, all, I know everything. I know how it works. I, I know how, if it breaks, I know what's wrong. I like, I know, you know what I mean? Like I just, I feel like it, like it gives me anxiety doing a wedding with like other shit. Like anytime I've done like destination weddings, you know, Mexico, Colorado, whatever, like, and, and, and I have to use obviously other shit. Like it'll, I always have this little anxiety. Like I hope everything works all right. I hope like they set it up right. I hope like, but that's just me in my own head and being a, a, a wedding DJ my whole life with like tons of backup and yada, yada, yada. Like, I don't know. Eventually it would be awesome. Imagine like every wedding you do, you just walk in, just walk in an hour before, you know, just for fun. Watch the ceremony. You come already dressed, you know? It's like you're attending a wedding. You take a shower at your house. You put on your suit. You just keep your jacket hung up. You toss it in the back of the whip. You drive your car. You know, you could just drive your Mazda 3 to the wedding. You don't need a trailer. You don't need a truck. You don't need a loading outfit. You don't need to change at the venue behind your facade, you know, real quick, hoping nobody sees your heart underwear. You don't need any of that shit. You just show up, set up your laptop, quick little sound check. I'm here. And that's it. Like, ugh. It's a dream of mine. I don't know. Sorry. I'm kind of fucking ran today, I feel like. 
What factors do you consider to put together quotes for your out of state weddings? So, um, there's, so, all right. So how this works is how I've been doing it is you have to factor in your time. If you have a wedding, so it's all, it's really a lot about logistics. Okay. So, um, if you have a wedding on a Saturday and let's say it's in California or something like that, I prefer 99% of the time to fly out the day before and then fly out. Obviously you can't fly out the day up. So you have to fly out the next day. Right? So you're traveling Friday and you're traveling Sunday and the wedding is on Saturday. You have to charge accordingly because now you can't book Friday and you can't book Sunday. So that's essentially your only, unless you have a Thursday wedding course, but like if a wedding's on a Saturday, you know, or even on a Friday, cause you're flying out the next day on Saturday, like you can only uh, book one wedding that weekend. So you have to charge accordingly. A lot of DJs, cause, and I know what happens because like it, I get these planners that hit me up. A lot of DJs, essentially you get, you get an opportunity. Oh, weddings in Florida. A lot of DJs will just charge their regular rate rate plus travel. And that's it. Cause it's fun. You get to go out to, to Florida and, and it's a good look. Look at me. I'm DJing in Florida when I'm really from Tennessee, whatever. Like I get that. Right. And it's fun, especially if you're young, but you're losing out on money because now that's your only wedding the whole weekend. You could have booked three weddings that weekend and made three times as much. You know what I mean? And like, I know all you guys are doing it. Like a lot of DJs are doing this because I get planners hitting me up all the time. I got hit up for a wedding in Italy and they were like, listen, um, uh, and, and I gave my price and they're like, wow. Uh, well, phew, a lot of, um, uh, a lot of vendors are, um, actually doing it pro bono, uh, just to have like a nice free trip to Italy. I'm like, well, I'm not fucking doing that. That's stupid. That's stupid. Also, I'm just gonna go, just to go. I, I'd rather just pay for a trip to Italy and go to fucking Italy. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? Pro bono. Doesn't that mean free? Yeah, that means free. No, I'm not doing free, free. You want me to do your fucking wedding for free? What are you dumb? This is the planner too. So by the way, so I'm not talking to the bride like this, but the planner, I don't give a fuck about planner. They, they just pissed me off. The, the balls in that. She said that in person, like, like, like over a zoom she said that in a zoom. No, I'm not doing it for free. Let alone like my regular, like, you know what I mean? Like you gotta, it's gotta be worth it to you. But for me, like I basically, I do two and a half, uh, w- no, one, 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 no, two, yeah. Two and a half times my rate. That's what I do. And that's why I recommend two and a half to three times your rate. So if you got a wedding, you have to travel to, it takes up your whole weekend. You can't do other gigs, two and a half to three times your, your rate plus your rider, right? Which is like speakers, everything else I'll bring. Like if it's domestic, like if it's in the continental United States, I'll bring my rev seven. If it's uh, international, they got to give me a mix or two. Cause I'm not trying to get a work visa and all that shit. And then, um, and then travel, of course. And you want to do your flights, your hotel transportation to and from the hotel. And if you could squeak it out a per diem. And a per diem is essentially a daily rate to cover your food and whatever, right? So you don't want to spend money. You know, you could have ate at home, but, you know, you, you got the hot dog. You know, you got yourself a glizzy at the airport. That's supposed to cover all that. You know what I mean? So that's basically what I would do, what I've been doing. Um, what, what are we doing here? Nick, this is a dumb, I have a learning disability, I'm a DJ, and I'm in a bad situation, I have a crush on a girl, we're having a college formal, I was going to DJ, but it got cancelled, and she's going out with a guy. Oh, I mean, you only live once, man, shoot your shot, slide in her DMs, be like, hey, listen, I got a crush on you, let's, uh, I'll take you out to Applebee's or some shit, you know what I mean, shoot your shot, bro. See, I've literally shoved all my gear in a Mazda 3. It was awful. Bro, uh, a few years back when I couldn't afford a truck or a trailer, I used to uh, put all my gear in a Chrysler 200. I had a Chrysler 200, a 2011 Chrysler 200, and I had it set. Like my, my, I, bought the, I, I didn't buy a sub that sounded good. I bought a sub that would fit in one of the back seats. So one back seat was a sub. Another back seat was a top. The front seat was the other top. Stands and mixer and everything went in the trunk, and that was it. I had like a, the pole lights, and like if I, um, and then I would have to like bring an assistant too. So my poor assistants who came with me, who didn't meet me at the venue, would have to sit on the front seat with a speaker in their lap, with a big ass JBL Eon. <laughs> in their fucking lap which was super dangerous like god forbid we got a car accident or something like that was years bro years of doing that just in the car like just embarrassing like uh but you gotta start somewhere you gotta start somewhere that's how you start and then you build and you save your money and a little bit better a little bit better a little bit better shouts to jay book what's good man not to list the songs are exactly what i've been telling some of these set in your way djs 
Yeah, DJ Idea Sharing, great place uh, to stop playing and try something out of your comfort zone. Got so much pushback on that. It's true. That's how you separate yourself. You know what I mean? And there's so many other songs. Um, and I, I, I've been discovering too. Um, you know what I played this weekend and it absolutely went off. And again, you have to play it right. Okay. I played I'm Just a Kid by Simple Plan. I have a video of it too. I'll probably post it as a TikTok. The I'm just a kid and life is a nightmare. You know that song? So that song was a bop when I was in high school. Probably a little bit after I was in high school. Maybe it was like the late 2000s or something like that, if I'm correctly, if I'm correct. But you got to play it right. You got to play the beginning. I woke up, it was seven. Like you play the beginning verse and then it goes to the chorus and then you get out. That's it. In and out. If you have an edit, great. If not, get out. But it went off. I mean, every person in the crowd sang it. It went off on the level of like Sugar We're Going Down by Fall Out Boy. You know what I mean? Which again is another song that I feel like, like like Mr. Brightside, Sugar We're Going Down. Those are all songs that everyone's playing now. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to like figure out songs outside of that, you know, so it doesn't, because it, it really people go to what it just, the our other the other argument is a lot of DJs are like, well, you got to realize that like some of these people, you know, how many, how many times, how many weddings do they go to, you know, it might be played out to you, but not played out to them. They never get to hear it, you know, and that's valid, I guess. But there, but there, there's people, especially when you're at the age, like when you get to your late twenties, early thirties, you know, everyone gets married, everyone around you, right? I've had, I've talked to couples that have gone to eight, 10 weddings in a year, which is insane, insanely expensive anyway, right? You know, you, 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 so that's what I'm kind of thinking of when it comes to like the played out songs too. You know what I mean? Maybe not played out to mom or dad or uncle or, you know, younger cousins or the people in their forties, you know, that don't go out much anymore or don't go to weddings much anymore. Right. Like I'm 35. I don't get invited to many weddings anymore. Like all my, you know, anybody I grew up with is married except for Kevin. Kevin will get married one of these days. Ke Kevin's been engaged for 14 years. Uh, shouts to Kevin. But, um, uh, but like those couples, when you're in your late twenties, early thirties, and they're going to all those weddings, those are the ones that truly notice like, wow, all these DJs play the same shit. I've had couples tell me that we've been to a bunch of weddings. All the DJs play the same shit. We want something different. We want something different. We want something different. Got you fam. You know what I mean? And that matters. Okay. Because if you think about it, if you do the math, right? Unlike Grimes. Okay. If you know, if you're good at math, unlike Grimes, I'd rather risk it for the biscuit and play stuff that like. Most DJs don't other play. So I know for a fact, hundred percent of the room hasn't heard these songs in a while, right? Rather than play the same shit everybody plays and just bank on, all right, well only like maybe 10, 20% of the room thinks it's played out. Everyone else will dance. Like, you know what I mean? I'd rather, I'd rather risk it and affect a hundred percent of the room, except instead of like just playing the same shit. And like, you know, there's 20% it's just like, ugh, you know what I mean? Ugh. Everybody plays this. Ugh. Ugh. Another line dance. Ugh. Uptown funk. Ugh. Unless you have a cool idea. If you have a cool idea and, you know, you, you were played out or something, then like, yeah, ugh, you're playing a played out song. But, oh, that was actually pretty cool what he did there. He did that different. That still sets you apart. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll play the Macarena, but then I'm going to go right into Macarena by Tyga, you know, or some shit like that, you know, or like, I don't know. except for YMCA. YMCA should be played every wedding no matter what. Every gig, every club gig, bar gig, every gig on earth should be playing YMCA. I don't care who you are. Eat my ass, okay? Eat my ass. I don't give a shit. YMCA is a banger. It's a damn banger. Oh, good. Set a date soon, sir. I can't wait for that wedding. I'm going to get wasted at your wedding. I'm going to throw up on you, Kevin, on your own wedding. I'm going to throw up on you. It's going to be great. That's it. Shouts to Ewan. What's good, bro? My man, Ewan. Um, all right, I'm going to answer a couple more, guys, and probably hop off. Nick, any experience with JBL Party Box trying to go? No. Prime Go is already a battery power looking for something for smaller backyard venues. I mean, check out that Alpha Theta. The Alpha Theta Wave 8 is like perfect for that. Like, I don't know. I have no experience with the JBL Party Box. I don't know. Maybe it's great. I, 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 I have no idea. But, um, but I do have experience with the Wave 8. I got two of them, and I think they're great. Completely wireless. You don't need any wires whatsoever. It, it, you don't need an XLR. You don't need a power cord. It lasts like eight hours. Sounds great. It's so fire. Like, I, I love those things. I'm actually going to get, I was talking to Santi about it. I think I'm going to sell my, um, sell my Everse eights and then, uh, buy two more wave eights just cause I just love the technology and it's just, it works so well. So I don't, I don't need like a lavalier. I don't need to like rig it or whatever. Like, you know what I mean? Like it literally is built in wireless. Like I had it in a um, cocktail hour this past, uh, Saturday and it was like a long, weird room. And we had like one, uh, one speaker in one corner, one speaker all the way in the other corner, even sound through cocktail hour. People were bopping. It was perfect. Like 
ceremony. I can now have two speakers completely wireless. So I'm in the back, you know, where I can't be seen in pictures of ceremony. And I literally set up my speakers in front of the person who's speaking like you're supposed to, but on either side. So it's even, so especially for bigger crowds, you know, my whole life I've been doing ceremonies with just like one, like, you know, I don't know, a bow stick or like just one speaker and I'm kind of in the corner and it's all one big setup. Now I can set up wherever the hell I want, especially with like the Jackery batteries, but then the actual speakers all wireless battery powered and I can have them right where they're supposed to be like bang, bang, clean as hell, no wires, like right up, right up front, like on either side of the altar, essentially like on either side of where, uh, not like, you know, you know what I mean? On either side. So it's nice and even sounds better for the mics, everything. Everybody can hear it. Love those wave eights. DJ Fish attended 10 weddings last year and have nine more this year. Yeah, dude, that's so expensive. And you go like, then, dude, then you'll get to my age and you won't go to another wedding again. Like literally, it's just, it just, all these, all these, uh, you know, when you get in your late twenties, early thirties, you go through this time where everyone gets married and it's crazy. It's almost like too much. Uh, oh, Kevin, you got yourself a free wedding DJ right here. DJ, DJ demand. All right. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Uh, Jack, what's good, Jack? Do you have any advice for things to look out for when working with lighting speaker companies as an affiliate DJ? Are there red flags to look at affiliated DJ? Like you're saying like uh, making content? Like, I don't know. There's nothing. Red flags? I don't know. The only thing when I'm, when I'm if you're talking about like um, doing reviews and shit, right? And you're making content. So like an affiliated thing. Uh, the only thing... I like my, my, my hard line or whatever. The only thing I look for is if they try and limit what I could say. Okay. I like, that's the first thing I say, Oh, Hey, you want to review this product? No problem. Can I say whatever the fuck I want though? That's like literally the first thing out of my mouth every single time. Can I say whatever I want? Or are you going to be butthurt if I don't like it? And you'd be surprised. I would say half of them are like, yeah, no, well, you can't like, you know, flame it. Well then no, I'm not doing it. You know, that's why I don't do reviews for like, um, you know, any of the websites that sell uh, products, you know, you're, you know, like all those, like, you know, if you go to a website and you buy those products, like any of those websites, like I, I don't do reviews for them specifically because they never want a bad review because at the end of the day, they're trying to sell all the products. You know what I mean? Like they'll, uh, they'll be like, Hey, you know, you want to do a review and we'll send you the speakers and you can compare these three speakers, but like, you can't flame one of them because then like, they're not going to sell any of that one. You know what I mean? And they have a bunch in stock. Like, you know, like I don't want to be limited like to what I could say. So that's like my number one thing. Other than that, I mean, I don't know. It was, can I keep it? Great. Not, no, you know, I don't know. DJ sidekick, Nick. Thanks, bro. Appreciate you, man. DJ Popo, the bar spinet doesn't have a dance floor. Should I make room myself so that people can dance or just let it be what it is? Let it be what it is, Popo. Listen, you play the jams right, people will dance wherever, okay? On chairs, on tables, in between tables, running into people, behind the bar, on top of the bar. People will find a place to dance if you get them vibing. You know what I mean? You never need to make a dance floor. They'll make their own. I've actually literally seen people move tables and make their own dance floor. You know, just, just trust your vibes. Spin the right vibes and people will vibe. Um, what's good, Haas? Nick, are Rockwell wedges worth it? Are Rockville wedges worth it? I don't know. I don't know about them. I can't speak on them, bro, to be honest with you. So I don't know. Uh, do you use a storage unit to store your equipment? I do because I have a crap load of stuff. Why do you want to know, Kevin? Why do you want to know where my equipment is, bro? Why? Why do you want to know? Don't worry about where my shit is. Don't worry about it, Kevin. Okay? Kevin sounds. Don't worry about it. All right? I store my shit on the moon. That's where my shit's at. You need a rocket ship to get to my equipment. Store my shit on the fucking moon. Yes, or like only using brand for X number of months. For example, only using X brand of speaker type. Yeah, like, ah, uh, that's... I don't like limitations like that, Jack. I don't fuck with shit like that, man. You know what I mean? Like, it, unless they're paying you. Like, you don't... In my opinion, don't uh, don't sign any contracts and where like they're like non compete type stuff unless you are getting a bag, bro. You better be getting a bag. I want to use whatever the hell I want to use. You know what I mean? Like, otherwise, I don't know. Yeah, don't do it unless they're paying you a fucking bag. No Nike track suit I have, i'm actually an adidas guy i'm, I'm more i'm more uh, stripes and check marks uh but yeah no i got my uh i got my going out shirt me and wife you're gonna go uh have some drinks later so i got my I got my button-ups on 
Uh, did you end up buying a new trailer? Did insurance cover it or cost you some straight cash, homie? So uh, my trailer was stolen a few months ago. How it works if you ever get a uh, trailer stolen. Um, insurance will uh, pay you, and they paid me um, what the value of my trailer was um, uh, you know, when it was stolen. So they take away the depreciation and all that. I think they gave me like 3800 bucks, and a new one cost six grand. So I was out $2,200. As far as the content in the trailer... Uh, your car insurance will not cover what's in the trailer, only the trailer itself. Now, if you want uh, to, you know, if you want to make a claim for whatever you lose inside the trailer, you have to do it through your homeowner's insurance. And I wasn't about to do that for a couple speakers, so I didn't do that. So I just took the L. So all in all, I probably lost, I don't know, four or five thousand dollars if I had to guess, because I I had an RCF nine ten in there. I had two RCF, yeah, more than that. I had two RCF HDM forty fives in there. I had. Um, I had a Bose L1 Compact in there. I had speaker stands, a couple mic stands, wires, backup shit. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it sucked. So, yeah, I got like 3800 bucks and probably cost me probably close to ten grand altogether. I don't know. But shit happens. Lock your shit up, people. Lock your shit up and put air tags in it. I learned my lesson that day. Learned my lesson that day. All love, Kevin. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, my... um. Yeah, like it, it uh, so the thing is, is uh, I, I recommend uh, if you don't have a garage or something, I would do like a storage unit, uh, climate controlled. It's better for your equipment and all that. If you live in, in an area with like extreme conditions, uh, less risk of theft, of course. My, my uh, personally, my, my dream setup would be if I had um, like one day I want to get a garage big enough where I can back in my trailer to that bitch. So I keep everything in the trailer, but then I just back that bitch into the, the climate controlled garage and just leave it in there. Like that would be fucking fire. Yep. Every wedding, I got to call up SpaceX and they, they deliver my shit. Uh, all right. Da, 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 da. DJ Red, it does blow. Lock up your shit, DJs. And seriously, all you guys, if you don't have air tags, definitely use air tags. Put an air tag in every book bag, laptop bag. Uh, your camera case, if you have one of those, you know, your everything, everything, your car, your trailer, your your van, whatever. Put air tags everywhere. Put one on your wife. Put put air tags everywhere because you never know when one of them grows legs and goes missing and you could track that bitch down. It's the first thing the cop asked me. The cop finally gets there like 45 minutes later when my trailer got stolen. He's like, yo, you got an air tag in that bitch? We'll follow it right now. I'm like, oh, I wish that would be awesome. I was in like the front seat. I was about to be like his deputy. We were about to go on a high speed chase. I was, I just had this whole, I was like, oh my God, I wish I had an air tag. Not only would I get my trailer back, I get to be a deputy for the day. Like that would have been the shit. We would have got out, whooped his ass, just stomped that motherfucker out. Whoever the fuck happened, whoever the fuck stole it. That shit would have been so fire. Air tag your shit. I got air tags on air tags on everything, on everything. Okay, you, anybody steals something from me again, they're catching. They're catching these hands. Okay, they're, they're catching an ass whooping. I will find you. Okay, I have a particular set of skills. Or whatever the fuck. What's the, what's the line from that uh that movie? You know where he lost his daughter or whatever. Anyway. Anyway, do you care about your audience politics opinions to choose tracks to play? Um, no, I don't care about it. I, the only thing I care about is if it works and that's it. So if a song works, I'm playing it. If it doesn't work, I don't play it. And that's it. I don't think about anything else. If I'm working for somebody like a couple and they don't want a song, I don't play it. If they want a song, I play it. If a couple wanted me to play R Kelly all night, nothing but if they, if, if I did a wedding and they're like, listen, we want an R Kelly and P Diddy night. Okay. Nothing but R Kelly and P Diddy. Well, I'm going to have to go buy their whole catalog and mix it all together. I don't give a fuck, right? And then, and then, and then I'll, I'll mix in some Trump uh, ad-libs in between all the mix. I'll do whatever they want. I'm, I'm working for you. You know what I mean? Don't matter to me. Don't matter to me. I don't get caught up in that shit. That's a slippery slope. Yeah, I agree. The only thing that Find My iPhone needs to get better with is I, I use the wallet in the back of the phone here, this wallet. And when you detach it, it just tells you where you detached it, but you can't like locate it with Find My iPhone which kind of sucks. Sometimes I lose, like my kid will grab my wallet and throw it behind the couch and I won't see it for like two, three days. I'm just driving hot boy with no license, you know? And like, oh, that's where you put it. Thanks, little Nick. Appreciate you. I, 
Julian, I don't know. I don't know if uh, wedding insurance covers that, and I don't want to know. I feel like you make a claim with wedding insurance, and they're going to jack up your rates 4,000 times, and like it's just not even worth it. Like You just got to have it to work at certain venues, and that's it. That's how I look at wedding insurance. I would never use wedding insurance unless unless a spotlight or speaker kill grandma. Like If, if we take out grandma, then I got to use the wedding insurance. It is what it is. But other than that, I'm not using it because like it's just a nightmare. The rest of your career, you're gonna play. You're gonna pay like you know, fifteen grand a year for insurance. Um, ignition. Yeah, I don't know. Last time I played it, I got the like knife to throw, but I'll try it again. I love the ignition. I used to play it all the time. Like you know what I mean? I don't know. As long as it works, I'll play it. I don't give a shit. Lewis suits. I like express. I, uh, I get all my suits from express. I think they're, they're not like the cheapest in the world, but they're not like $2,000 suits either. You know what I mean? You can get a suit at express for like three, 400 bucks, 500 bucks. Uh, I think they fit nice and, you know, get them tailored or whatever. Um, fragrances. I have no set fragrance. I don't know. I, I have scent bird where like they send you a new fragrance every week. So, uh, I don't know. I just, I try a new one every week and my wife either hates it or kind of likes it or I haven't found a fragrance yet where she's just like, wow. <laughs> So maybe she's picky. I don't know. Fragrances are up to her. Um, the person stealing the trailer will be notified within 15, 20 minutes. They are being followed by as air tags. They can then push, make noise, and they will find them and destroy them. Yeah. That's why you put the air tags where there's no way you can get to them like like in a trailer wall and multiple of them like i i will show up with these two hands before you get to all the air tags there's no way you're gonna have to rip the whole trailer apart you're gonna have to find them like you know what i mean like i like you're catching an ass whooping before you find them like that that's the whole thing that's why it's it's a, it's a countdown you know what i mean you, you you it's gonna take you longer than 30 minutes to find them it, it it's Do, 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 do. Word. Well, I think we're Gucci. I think we're going to wrap up. Any other questions? You should try the Cupid Cologne. Cupid Cologne? Like the, like the line dance? Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. I don't get to do it all. Like with the guests, I don't really get to do it, so... Maybe I could. Maybe we should do like a QA. and a Maybe you guys think. Let me know in the chat. You guys think I should do like a, like a fifteen minute Q and A at the end of every um, interview I do. I never really do that, and that way we can like uh, you can ask whoever I'm interviewing some questions and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Damon, did you steal my trailer, bro? You the one that stole my trailer? Do you think it's a good idea to be subcontracted under a DJ company? I mean, I am. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the way to do it. You know, you uh, you do it as a employee, you're going to pay more taxes. You, if you're a subcontractor, you can write more things off and you have more opportunity for tax breaks. Um, especially depending on what tax bracket you're in and stuff, it can get pretty hairy up there. So, word, word, word. Uh, how do you know songs will work with crowd and what won't? Excuse my dumb question. I'm new to DJing. Brett, it's literally uh, trial and error. DJing is like stand-up comedy. You know what I mean? You don't know what joke's going to hit until you try it on stage, and then, you know, you just try shit out. Stand-up it's it, stand -up comics will work out their routines, you know, in the in the early stages and open mic nights and and then kind of critique it and see what works best. You, you, that's what you got to do. It, it's, it's a very hard thing. You know what I mean? And then go out, too. Like, if you go out and listen to other DJs and you watch them play songs... And make a mental note, like, wow, he played this one song, and that worked really good. So I'm going to write that down. I'm going to play that when I DJ. You know what I mean? And shit like that. So watching other DJs and um, and just trying shit out yourself, you know, uh, is is uh, is the only way to really figure out what works and what doesn't. And it constantly changes, too. That's what's tough, too. You know, songs that worked last year don't necessarily work this year and vice versa. There's ones that – there's songs that always work no matter what, I guess, or, you know, stand the test of time longer, but, like – it constantly changes. You have to keep up with it, you know, and it's just like a constantly evolving thing, but, uh, it keeps it new and fresh and it's, it's why it's a fun job. You know what I mean? It doesn't get uh mundane, you know, DJing doesn't get mundane to me because I'm constantly faced with a new challenge or a hard crowd or whatever, you know, you know, or an easy crowd and I can fuck around and yeah. So I don't know. 
I'm seriously considering it, um, DJ Algorithm. I think it's uh, superior to Serato uh, in multiple ways. Serato actually egregiously just dropped a video of someone showing how to fix your beat grid. <laughs> Where it's like sometimes when you scan a song, it does it. It's like a girl doing it. She's like sometimes when you scan a song, it does, you can look on Serato's Instagram. Um, sometimes when you scan a song, it doesn't match up the beat grid perfectly. So this is how you fix it. You hold all and da da da, and it goes through the whole process. And I'm dying laughing watching this. Like yo, algorithm DJ literally is like almost perfect. Like it literally, it not only will have a perfect beat grid almost every single friggin' time. Like you can't stump it. If you have a song that like like uh, TT Med Pergunta or whatever that starts out at like 104, then goes up to 111, then goes back to 104, like you know one of those songs that changes BPM in the middle of the song or like um, or uh, I'm a B, you know I'm a B by Black Eyed Peas starts out in the 90s and then goes up to like 120, right? It'll literally adjust the beat grid as it goes. So like your BPM reading on that song will start at 93 and then go up to 120 when the actual song goes up to 120 which is insane, which is something we've always needed. Like, it's there already. Serato is way behind. And the only thing that holds me back from switching to Algorithm DJ is that the, the compatibility. Like, I use, I primarily use an S11 or a Rev7, and the screens would not work uh, with, uh, like, it'll, the, it'll work with the program, but the screens will just be blank. And it just bothers me. So that's literally the only thing holding me back, to be honest with you. Like, it, Algorithm DJ is fire. Like, that shit is fire. It, it's really good. Their stems are better. I think I like the look of it. I like the library. The shit is fire. If you don't use like an S11 or Rev7 or anything with screens, like, I, I, then I think you're goofy for not using it. You should definitely check it out. The Drake disc track is ridiculous. It's so far. It's so far. Like Drake, Drake, I don't know. Maybe he doesn't write his rap, whatever. I don't know. I don't know. But like Drake, Drake consistently just destroys people. And he's, he's the, he's, he's the king. He's the top. He is what it is. It is what it is. He's, he's, he's the king of hip hop. So can't mess with that guy. You can't mess with that guy. Rick Ross is a uh, bugging. Rick Ross is literally bugging. All those guys are bugging. They're, they're, I don't, I would never pick a fight with Drake. I guess they want the attention, but yeah. You should make your moniker DJ Cannoli. That's very racist of you, Damon. Don't you think? Hmm? It's very racist. It's very racist. It's unbelievably racist. Yeah, the fluid beat grid. Shit is fire. Uh, I am an LLC. LLC. Um, you could do either way. Uh I forgot my accountant explained it, but LLC works best for me. I don't even want to like, I don't want to speak on it because I don't really know what I'm talking about. I kind of lean on professionals when it comes when it comes to that shit. But I am an LLC. All right, this will be the last question. I'm going to dip out, people. I appreciate you all for coming, by the way. So, any changes or new recommendations to your content strategy? Um, so, I mean, for me personally, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep. A lot of times I get stuck in uh, in wedding season and I stop doing the show just because I'm so uh, backed up, but I am doing less weddings this year. So I have more time for other opportunities like bars and clubs and stuff like that. And then also so I can continue doing this content. So I'm gonna keep doing the show. Uh, I want to produce more videos on YouTube. Uh, I have a couple ideas and I just got to plan shit out. I got to plan it out. If I just say I'm going to do it, I never do it. I got to like actually plan stuff out. So I'm going to do more videos for YouTube. Um, obviously, I'm going to keep getting my TikToks and Instagram, uh, IG vids, like the, the same style of me mixing. I have tons of new ideas and just throughout the whole wedding season and clubs and everything, I'm going to be doing those. In addition to that, I, I have the new concept where like it's just like three of me or two of me, you know what I mean? And I'm like going back and forth and that's how I can like just kind of uh, showcase stupid ass ideas that I would never do live, you know? So I'm doing that. Um, and then I'm going to start doing more uh, more uh, talking head content too. I'm going to fuck around with like like Instagram and TikTok. Like I'm going to hop on and just like, you know, talk real quick. You know what I mean? Like 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 my reel will be me talking about like a, a subject or something. Um, but I haven't found a unique, like a good way to do that. That's why I haven't done it yet. You know what I mean? I don't want to like... I, I want it to be unique somehow, so I'm just trying to figure out the right angle, you know? I don't know. Because, like, I'll record it, and I'll watch it back, and I'm like, this is dumb, you know? So, and that's it, people. Um, so, thank you all for joining me. I appreciate it. Happy Tuesday. Enjoy your week. Crush your gigs this weekend. I'll be back next Tuesday, uh, as usual. And, uh, yeah, I think I said it all. Peace out, people. Love you all. Late. Thank <laughs> you.